what we're going to be going over here is what they refer to as a directional derivative. Uh, and we're looking at it in terms of the production function. It's going to be similar to the Cobb-Douglas production function. So what we're going to be looking at here for our production function, we're just going to have some profit is going to equal some revenue minus some cost here. So this is the uh, function that we're going to be looking at here. Profit or output Q here would be in dollars. And then looking at our revenue section here, we're on a per unit basis, we'd be selling a product here for $1,400. And you take that times some material input here and some labor input raised to some exponential amounts here. So for material, I'm looking at about 50% here as a percentage of the revenue here. And that would be material point. 5035 and then for labor about 32 percent of the revenue here that's raised to an exponent of three point or 0.3215 and then you'd have a cost per unit here for your material and labor but what we're not going to deal with is the cost here all we're going to look at is the revenue part here to determine what the directional derivative is so we've got two inputs here and we have to determine the output and really what we're looking at when we're talking about a directional derivative is the change in output at some designated point here uh, based on your function here in this case the uh, production function that we have defined here okay so just going down here and looking at it so this is our function here and I'm showing it here in 3d so our function here uh, defined by our 1400 times our material and our labor inputs here I'm showing that here with those isoquant lines here but what we're trying to do here with the directional derivative at our targeted point here we want to determine exactly what output our material and our labor is contributing to any additional output here so that's what we're looking at we want to what we have to determine is the directional derivative it's really a unit output it's the slope here is some in this case i've got it shown here uh, based on a tangent plane shown here in green it's the slope here at that targeted point and really we have that's defined here by the slope of our material and labor here oh those are what they call these yellow lines here our gradient lines here so we have to determine the slope of our material and labor inputs at that point here. And based on those inputs here and a directional uh, vector here, we'll be able to, we'll, these uh, slopes here are really our gradient vectors here. And then we'll have a directional vector that we'll be calculating. So our gradient vector times our directional vector, that re equals our directional deriv der derivative here, which is really a quantity or amount. So this is this red arrow here is going to be our directional derivative or that change in unit output or the slope at the designated point. Okay, so that's what we got here. Q here along our vertical axis that would be our output or our profit in this case and then our labor would be increasing here material increasing here just so you get an idea of what's going on okay so let's go up and let's first look at what we have to do so the first thing we have to do based on our function here we have to come up with the gradient or the vector path here uh, that's really the direction of the greatest increase here in our output here and really you do it take a partial derivative of your function here uh, looking at both the material and your labor inputs okay so for our uh, gradient path here that's really based on our function I have shown here in the background with those ISO quant lines here this gradient path shown in red here this is the path uh, that it has the maximum production if we have our target point or any of our points on this gradient path here we'll have the maximum uh, maximum profit essentially is what we're looking at and really the gradient path is really a proportional increase here in your material and labor as you move up it so to get onto that path here you have to have the right combination of your labor and material here so really i've got two different sets of these uh, uh gradient vectors or our a combination of both our labor and material that we have to put in here and I only put two of them in here just to show that there's really a change here it depends on your input and those gradient lines how they affect here how they're gonna how we have to determine your gradient vector path here in order to determine the uh, directional derivative or the amount of output or the increase at our targeted point here okay so just by definition here I'm showing those red 
uh, curvature lines. Those are really level curves here. There's are really the equal product lines here, or this is where we have our, and these yellow things are really those gradient vectors. At some point, we, on our, in this case, we're gonna be defining it here at a targeted output. You have to have a targeted output when you're dealing with these uh, directional derivatives and so forth. Otherwise, it really has no meaning. And then the gradient vectors here are really perpendicular to uh, these isoquant lines. That's where you're going to get your greatest increase here when your gradient vector is perpendicular to them. And that gradient vector is shown as this line, this red line moving up and down here. And really you're looking at the targeted path here of these gradient vectors, these yellow things. It, well, it's a tangent path, excuse me, and it's a change in the slope for your material and your labor. Really it's the marginal product that you're looking at. So just again, looking at these uh, gradient paths here, I had inputs here, 35 uh, labor and 30 material, and you can see it, they're coming up here. But they're intersecting here at approximately on the uh, uh, gradient path, that red path. So that would be a good point, as long as you're intersecting on there, and a combination of labor and material. But what we're gonna look at is for our targeted output, I've already done a linear uh, program on it. I know that based on my constraints that I have put in here, a combination of 78 units of labor and 70 units of material, I'm gonna, they're gonna intersect at my targeted output. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so what we have to do is first determine these, these gradient vector here. So let's go and let's understand that. Okay, so what you were talking about, those partial derivatives. So this is our function that we have here, that our production function showing here. So what you're gonna do is you have to take a partial derivative here, and we'll just go through it really briefly here. So X and Y, that represent, X I represents my material, Y, my labor input here. So what you do here, you just take, hold one of them constant. So if we do our partial in terms of our material here, F of X here, you just take your Y, value here, y raised to its co, uh, exponent here, leave that constant in your formula here or in your derivative here. And then you just take, you take your, take your exponent here, your x exponent or your material exponent, take and take that times the, uh, your coefficient here, 1400. That will give you in this case, 704 here. And then you subtract one from that here. So it brings your x down into your denominator here, one from 5, 5, 0.5035 minus one is gonna give you 0.4965. Okay, so that's for our partial derivative here for f of x, and really that's the slope here of our material. And if we put it in for our points, point here, 78 for labor and 70 for material, put it into our derivative, partial derivative here, we're gonna get our change or our slope here in material at that point at 347 or they be $347 or it's contributing. That's the rate of change that we're looking at. And then for Y, you do the same thing. In this case, you would just hold your X uh, variable here and its exponent, leave it as a constant and just take Y. Y, you take its exponent times the coefficient here, 1400, you're gonna get about 450. Subtract one from that here, from its exponent, and that's gonna give you what? 0.3215 minus one is gonna give you Y here becomes in the denominator because it's a negative amount, so that becomes Y raised to the 0.6785. So again, just plug in your numbers here, 78 for labor, 70 for material, put them into your der partial derivative here, and you're gonna get a slope here for labor at the point at 198.85, or that's really the rate of change here. So what we did, we had to do this in order to come up with the gradient vector here. So we have to come up with our rate of change at that point here for both our material and our labor. So that becomes our what they refer to as our gradient vector. So let's just look at our X slope, our material here, 347.01. So that's our first part of our vector here, a gradient vector times its direction here. Plus we add to it the uh, Y portion or the labor portion here. That was for material, excuse me, forced if I didn't say it here. But our labor portion is then next here. So its slope here or its rate of change, 198.85 times its direction here. So that is our gradient vector. So we solve for our grade, that's the key that we have to do. First, we have to come for a gradient vector, we solve for that, and then we take our directional vector and then 
we can determine the uh, directional derivative or the amount of output. So the gradient factor, really that's the direction of the greatest increase here in case of in this case of our output. And you know that landed on our when we let's just go back and look at it. So that is on our gradient path. I know I graphed out this gradient path because I've did a linear programming and I know what based on our function here, I know that we have to follow this path here. So everything's graphed out. So that is our targeted output and based on that we'll now determine our directional derivative or the change of output here based on our labor in our material inputs and our function, our production function. Now we'll calculate our directional derivative or the vector here at the point that we were looking at here, our target point. And really that's the slope of the tangent plane in the direction of the point or the, our target point. Now really that's the rate of change in a specified direction. So that's the key here. You have to have a specified direction and a targeted point here. Really the directional derivative can be the slope here at any point in any direction, but it's meaningless here the directional derivative or the directional uh, vector here unless you, until you specify a direction. Okay, so going down here and looking at our uh, function here plotted out here, this uh, red uh, arrow here, that's really the directional derivative we're looking at here. And that directional derivative is really composed here of our uh, material input here. And those are those, uh, the slope here, or change in our marginal products for our material here and our uh, labor here, those yellow lines. And those are depicted here by the arrows here for, let's say, our material input here and our labor input. Knowing our labor and material input at our targeted point here, whatever those changes are, we can determine our directional derivative here. Okay, so just going back over here, maybe it's a little easier to see here. So the, on this side here, just looking at our see-through wire diagram here for a production function, our directional derivative is shown here, and then say our labor input here is this vector here, and then our material is the vector here. And those vectors here for your material and labor uh, are, become your directional derivative. And in our case here, our directional derivative here it is sitting on the gradient path here. And that gradient path, that's the path here of the greatest increase in output here. And then I'm just showing here, we had uh, starting here at zero inputs and then we moved up here to our targeted point here showing in this blue line, that's really our output. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna, again, our target point for our output here was uh, 70 units of material and 78 units of labor here. And that is our specified direction here. And what we're trying to do here, we have to have our, first off, let's look at it, the direction for our, we, can, we have to determine our directional derivative here, or the direction of the greatest increase here in our output, and they call that the vector dot product here. So let's just understand how we would calculate that here. So let's look at the case here, our direction, uh, directional vector here is really those 70 units here of material plus 78 units here of labor, that's the, this directional vector here, but we have to convert this directional vector here into a unit basis before we can use it to determine our vector dot product here. So just understanding what that is, we just use the Pythagorean theorem here. We have a right triangle, uh, M and L here for material and labor. So you take whatever, your material input here, square it, plus your labor input here, square that, and just take the square root of that uh, quantity here and you divide it into uh, the unit here for material, I guess our labor here was 78, and you're going to come up with a unit amount here. And you have to have a unit amount, otherwise it doesn't work. So that uh, ratio or that division here gives you 0.74428 here, and that would be for our labor. And do the same thing for material here. You just take, again, you take your 70 units plus 78 units here, square those, add them together, take the square root and divide it into the units here for material. 70 and you're going to come up with, I think, 0.66794. So you, we have to convert our directional derivative to a unit length here, and that is the key here. Okay, so let's go over here. Now we can determine our direction here of the greatest increase here or our directional derivative based on the fact that we had that target point here on our uh, gradient path with the greatest output and you take the vector dot product so let's look at it so our gradient vector that we calculated earlier was uh, for 
m here was 347.1 and take time some quantity here uh, the vector length here plus 198.85 here for our labor here Okay, and now we take our directional vector here on a unit basis that we calculated here for material, I got 0.6679, labor 0.7442. So that's why we had to come up with that unit basis. So you take that times your gradient here, just match up your, in this E to X is here for material, E to Y here is for our labor. So you just take the gradient here for your uh, gradient vector here, that's the direction of the greatest increase here, times your unit vector here for, in this case, material, and that's going to give you, that multiplication is going to give you, a, the portion here for material is 231.77, and then for labor, same thing here, just take 198.85 times its unit of uh, uh, directional vector of 0.7442, that's going to give you 147.98. So you add those two uh, vector quantities together here, uh, 231 plus 147, you're going to get this is where you get the directional derivative here. And this is what we were trying to get down to. And that's 379.75 here. So that's really the slope of the plane here. Based on our targeted point for our material input here and our labor input, this is what we're increasing here, our, our uh, output here at that rate here. So we could have gone through all this mechanics that we went through. In this case, I used the MapleSoft. We could have just put in a simple command here and it would have given us uh, based on our function that we have and our inputs, it would give me a directional derivative here, this amount, uh, 27292, square root of 2, and that come up with a directional derivative, and that's that slope or that rate of the greatest change here in our, for our output at 385.96. Okay, compares to what my multiplication is here. I put it, didn't put enough decimal points in here because uh, that's the only difference, 379 versus 385, just didn't carry out enough decimal points. But uh, you have to really have some software package where you can put this all in. It just takes a little bit of doing and you can come up with your derivatives that way. Okay, so that's our what they call the vector dot product if we refer to that. And that just gave us our directional derivative amount. And then just to sum it up here, let's move up over here. Okay, so back to our production function here, looking from the underside this is the bottom side of that, our directional derivative or that tangent plane here at that point here. And really that's, again, the directional derivative, you can see here that from the underside, this was 147 point, that was for, I guess, our labor here, plus 237 here for our material, that vector here, that one, add that one, and that one together, and you're gonna give our directional derivative here, which is a, a quant, is, is really a amount here. It's not a vector. It's just the amount of increase that we're looking at. In this case, it's an increase in the direction that, and actually at that point, 379.75. So that's the change of our slope and material here. And that's what we talk about, the directional derivative here. It's, it's really a scalar amount or it's a quantity here at a targeted direction. And just moving down here, again, just to understand it, looking at it from the top side here, at a, a side profile here, here's our production function. Here's the slope of our, that directional derivative. That's really our tangent plane based on our labor and material here. This directional derivative, this red arrow is shown here. Again, looking at our, and that's at that targeted point here where we had starting of zero to our targeted point here for our output here. And I don't know what that was, 44,000 or something, something in the 40,000s here. But at this point here, we're adding to our output at a rate here of $379 per unit of input here for material and labor. And remember, they have to be put in, I didn't mention it, a, a proportional or a, an amount here, that ratio that we looked at here at that unit vector amount, essentially. We're putting them in at that proportional amount and this is what we're getting out at exactly at that point that we're looking at. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up here for the directional derivative. It's a long process to go through here just to explain it, but looking at it in terms of these 3D diagrams and our calculations, you get an understanding of what we're talking about.